Today's training, we are going to cover engraving and cutting acrylic. There are hundreds of different variations. There's sheets of various colors and sizes. So what we're going to get into first is looking at the different materials. We'll get into looking at the different bits, feeds and speeds, and then how to approach cutting these different materials within the acrylic name. Uh, first, what we'll look at is most people refer to acrylic is always thinking it's the the clear stuff that you see the plexiglass you know that's the most commonly known brand that you could go to their home depot or lowe's and, and there's a plexiglass there but there's lots of different brands for this and what makes the clear acrylic really nice instead of using say real glass would be it is a shatter resistant and it's lightweight for when it's put into use uh, we're going to look at other types of acrylic besides just clear acrylic as we demonstrate through our cutting process today. Uh, CNC versus laser, you know, we're doing here for ShopBot today, but uh, just to show you the you know, reasons why it's better to have a CNC over a laser is uh, when you're actually getting into the cutting, and we're talking about cutting through, you know, these laser cutters we can't compete with when it comes to engraving. They, they, can, they can go a lot faster, uh, but when it comes to cutting, we got them beat there. And then when it comes to the engraving performance, like the eagle head in the picture here, um, that's actually 3D carved down into there, where the laser is not actually able to get down to different le depths. Uh, and then finished materials too, if you had some, you know, maybe a piece of steel that had a oxidized finish on it, uh, you know, you put that into the laser, it's going to burn up along the edge as well. Say you had a piece of um, a wood that you've already stained or painted and you want to carve into that with a CNC you're able to go and cut along that edge and it's not going to burn up the painted edge. So we'll look at a couple different types here uh, cast versus extruded that has to do with the way the the acrylic is actually made uh, when it's cast it's actually warmed up melted and poured into a mold where extruded it's pushed through to a certain size so we actually get a better edge quality when we can cut into cast now that doesn't mean you can't cut extruded a lot of the name brands that we looked at earlier those are some extruded versions it's just a matter of playing with the feeds and speeds a little bit so you don't end up with a gummy or a sticky edge so both of them can be cut the cast one is the preferred Next, we'll look at several different types of bits. Uh, I've shown here the ShopBot website, which we, we carry several. That doesn't mean you're limited to using only the Onsrud brand that we have here. I'm going to show you a few of our bits that we sell, and I'll show you some other ones that I like to use as well. So let's start looking into these bits. Uh, the most commonly used one for end mills is this quarter-inch solid carbide. What this is is an up has an upscore O flute to it. So it's really nice for pulling the chips up out of there. So the chip evacuation is really nice with this bit. It keeps them plastic chips from building up down inside the kerf of the cut, which if it was to build up too much material inside the kerf of the cut, if it came around for another pass, um, it would actually feel like there's you know solid material in there again and it could snap it off. So what's nice about this one is it gets the... Gets the uh, material up out of the cut. So, and you can see this bit is something that is used on all these different other types of materials. It's the chip load and the feed and speed that you put into your machine when you go to cut it. Uh, since a lot of people will be doing engraving with the, the acrylic, I'm going to look at a, several different engraving bits. And the 60 degree one's a really nice one. And what you're noticing on these that might be a little bit different for you guys that have done V-carving before is this actually has what you see as a, as a flat tip. Though it's only 0.02, what it has here is a flat tip. You get a better edge quality when you're using these flat tip bits than you would with a straight V-bit. Uh, they will work, yes, and we'll show you examples of both, but just saying that the, when you get into a lot of engraving, these type of engraving bits are actually designed with a flat tip and then the angle that's desired. So here's a 60 degree. <clears throat> we also have a 30 degree, so it has a .005 tip. So it's just a small flat tip with a 30 degree, and that's able to go in and do engraving on, you know, you see a lot of people do on small circuit boards and little signs and name tags. 
So another one too is the actual diamond drag bit. This is not one that cuts, this one drags. This is a spring loaded diamond tipped and you'll see this on an example where we engrave a fire logo uh, onto a piece of red acrylic. And what's nice about this is it being spring loaded allows you to come in and use it on material that's say maybe warped or imperfect. It'll actually, the spring will adjust so you don't have too deep or not too deep of a cut. The spring adjusts to the imperfections of the material. Though these bits aren't necessarily classified as an engraving bit, they're still able to use these for doing acrylic cutting. Uh, the flat tip is going to give you better quality than a v-tip. You can see here though on the left for doing this dog paw coaster used a v90 which has a perfect tip. It's just a matter of testing it on a scrap piece and getting the right feed and speed. Uh, sometimes people will slow it down, run it, run it a second time at a faster, you know again there's a, we first slide was a hundred different types of acrylics that are out there and you're gonna have to mess with you know the, the acrylic that you're using and once you get it down you're gonna have a rhythm that works for you just uh, on here on the right hand side our 16th inch taper ball nose that we use on all kinds of different material for doing 3d carving and uh, it's hard to get a perfect chip load obviously with 3d carving but with that bit right there you're able to get in a 3d face onto this piece of clear acrylic uh, the One of the best routes would be is actually using the bit manufacturer, and they have uh, right on the OnThrough website is uh, the, the plastic machine site where you can go in and test in your different bits, look up different bits through type of acrylics material that you're using, and they get very, very specific with the different types of material. We also have built into your ShopBot 3 software, or down the road into our new Fabmo software you'll have something called a chip load calculator and this chip load calculator allows you to go into underneath tools chip load calculator and then you can type in different feed rates and speed spindle speeds and it will give you chip loads that match both the Onsrud catalog and here underneath our chip load help so you know you're applying the correct feed and speed for that density of acrylic alright we're about to get out on the machine and show you some examples but before you cut just you know, find a place to purchase down here in the southeast we have some companies called Sobic and Piedmont Plastics that we're actually cutting enough plastic that we'll buy a lot of bulk stuff four by eight sheets and a bunk from them but if you're just testing out some material or you just need a little piece for a single job you can usually find some stuff at a local hardware store that will work but know what type of acrylic you're doing you're using do some research on it make sure you're using the right bit and you're using the right chip load the bits that I showed you earlier are all good bits but again as being that there's such a broad range of different acrylics you're gonna maybe dial in your feed and speed that was shown earlier to match your material specifically and then always just test on a scrap piece before you you know put it on that that finished piece so with that being said let's go look at a few examples here cut out on the shop bot so these are the projects that we're going to cut out and we'll look at the different types of materials, the bits, and in the software what it took to program these to be cut. The first one we'll look at here is the 3D carving. So there's our 16th inch taper ball nose working itself into the clear acrylic. This was just grabbing one of the included 3D vector that comes with your VCar Pro software. And you can see it's just going to step over back and forth. It's pretty clean coming straight off. And then finally when the eagle head finishes up, it has a really good finish for this. And there are different finishing techniques for acrylic, but let me hold this one up to the light once it's cut out and you'll see how well this one came out. It appears blue because it's still the protective coating that comes on the plastic is on the back side. So once I peel that off and hold it up to the light, there you can see straight off the machine, it comes out pretty darn clear. And using a couple different techniques that you can you can find online for cleaning up different types of acrylic, you can have this thing smooth and looking crystal clear in no time. 
I do want to point out again that this is clear acrylic. It appears blue because there's a protective coat that comes on each side of this. So during shipping and transportation, it doesn't get scratched. Uh, the top has been removed. Reasons for that being, one, if the top has been loose at all, it could get spun up into the spindle. And two, you really don't want to be cleaning up all these tiny little pieces out of here. So it was just a personal preference in this example why this was pulled off. And then this just shows you what the finished edge is going to look like. And we'll get into the video here cutting and you'll see what happens when we pull the back finish off. All right, on this example, you'll see a series of V carving, engraving, and through cutting using the end mill. So this is our clear acrylic held down. You can see in this first example, I put the V90 in. It did not have the flat tip. And you can see that it did leave some stuff, debris, down into the curve of the cut. Later, I switched to the engraving bits that were shown earlier in the PowerPoint. And you got a lot smoother finish here. This is a profile on the line in this example for the toolpath. <clears throat> and you can see here it's a lot smoother of a finish having that flat bottom. And again, the same bit. There's a little bit right there on the dog paw, but very minimal with the right feeds and speeds. This one here was a pocket with a flat depth, and this one here I just put an eighth inch end mill in with a straight bit, and it came out with a really good finish. There's a little bit of machine mark in it, but not much that I couldn't just scrape it out with a little dentist tool. And then here's the quarter inch end mill that we showed the up spiral. I like to put a ramp tool path on these, works its way down nice and smooth. Also, there's a profile tool path where you can cut. A little bit larger than your project and then do a separate last pass that's also a great feature for getting a really nice quality edge along these types of plastics but just with this one you can see that it had a really good edge and pull off the backing and you can see the clear acrylic and just to finish up these last couple cuts so you can see the logo being cut out the same bit on the two different sizes here of the dog paw and the fireman's crest, I, ch I tried two different examples where one was with the ramping and then the other one was a separate last pass. On this acrylic, it didn't really make a difference. It had the same edge quality on both. That's a good sharp bit, good material held down, flat table, and the right feeds and speeds. I was able to get the edge quality I wanted using both methods. Also took some clear acrylic and got some little rope lights off Amazon and was able to sit here and use a ball nose to go in and carve out a groove for that rope light to sit down in place. And then just use a little hot glue on the back in several spots to keep it go in. And just made a couple neat light up signs using the same method there. All right, let's look at engraving plastic. This is really neat stuff because it you can get it with whatever color as the surface color and then you can get it with a different core color so you can make it look like different brasses and different non-ferrous metals without it actually being metal it's still the plastic uh, this example here are actually going to be cutting out name tags this one uses a tiny little engraving bit and these name tags are what we wear at shop bottom when we're out on the shows and doing stuff so the little tiny bit did the engraving of the text with the logo and this also used the Vectrix software where I was able to put in the name and then pop this all out using the plate production setting. And, and then an end mill to go around and clean up the edge. And, you know, you could get these bits from different places. It's just a, you know, 0 .0313 bit. I've always been real happy getting uh, it from Precise Bits. Give them a little plug. Onsroot also sells them, and there's also several ones. But uh, do buy them in six packs. They're very small, delicate, fragile bits. Uh, more than likely, you're not cutting them, breaking them when you're cutting. You're going to break them while you're handling them. So let's take a look at this one cutting. All right, so handle with care, getting that little engraving bit in. But once you do, 
and you get the seed and speed set down on this thing it's just going to go back and forth and take out these tiny little spots so this is a great bit for making small little signs circuit boards any little intricate projects and let me zoom in here so you can see this guy in action and this is just using a pocketing tool path in this example so, so far out of the VCAR Vectric software, we've used the engraving, and we've also used the regular profile and pocket tool pathing. So just depending on the type of project you have and the size that you have to be cutting with. For this next example, we're going to look at red tinted acrylic. This is a, a cast piece of acrylic that has a reddish tint. The example being held was used the uh, with the diamond drag knife that the knife was dragged along the acrylic and etched the surface the one down on the shop box this one's used with a v bit and a v carve this v bit was actually the engraving type that was shown earlier it has the flat bottom that flat bottom was able to get a nice clean edge through here a very minimal scrap though the picture isn't the best quality it was a really good turnout in that cut that diamond etch gave a good edge as well but what it did was it was so fine it was really hard to see in this example uh, here's the material this was the brand Truecast you can see I just ordered a sheet of this it was a small piece I'll give these guys a little plug to inventables.com if you don't have any place local that you can get this type of material from these guys if you go on their website they have every size and shape and color of acrylic that you can think of for for all your engraving needs so here again is the one with the diamond. This is the diamond. You can just see what it's doing, etching the material. And again, being held up with the right light, it really is pretty sharp. And then again, there's the one with the V carve. And when that's held up to the light, there's a little bit of light, it has a little bit of transparency. And then when you put a real light behind it, it really brightens things up. So let's look at the red cast. First, you could see the the diamond. The diamond is spring loaded, so it'd be ideal for any material that's not uniform. I just wanted to do a side by side comparison. Here you can see that diamond does not spin; it drags, it etches along the surface. Next, I put the quarter inch up spiral O flute in after doing the V bit on that one, and use that to cut out both edges. Again, this one here I did to get the best edge quality. I did a profile toolpath where I did a separate last pass and now that separate last pass stepped in to the, to the actual finished size and then made the cut through there. For some of you that are just getting started this could be a lot to take in. Uh, we're cutting a lot of different materials in this example, different bits. Some of these bits don't come with your tool database so there is some additional work for you adding them. There's different tool paths being shown here as far as engraving. If you're new to the VCAR Pro, I would definitely spend some time looking over a lot of the tutorials in both our website and the Vectric website to get familiar with that. Because in these examples, we use Profile, we use the Pocket, we use the Quick Engrave, Engraving Tool Path for the Diamond Drag and for the V30 and we also used a V carve so we use several of these and to keep this training on topic I'm not going to be able to have time to go into each one of these but I would definitely take advantage of the resources of both Vectrix website underneath support training materials and they can go in and train you on all the different sections of their software also on our webpage we have a training page with training tutorials and videos where tried to cover these as well. So today's training was on cutting and engraving acrylic. This should get you some bits, some feeds and speeds, get you going, trying some different materials, some resources from where to get your materials. Remember to try on a scrap piece, get familiar with the material that you're going to be using before you start cutting into a mass production size. But I hope this was a good training for you guys to get into cutting and engraving acrylic. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.